I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fangs, claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. But, like, for real, they're pretty freaking awesome. Yeah, dude, they look pretty dope. Like, I am i don't know. I'm kind of in love with that scale. Yeah. Because, like, my collection's already huge. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've been trying to scale it down. So. So you're just buying smaller ones. Yeah. Yeah, well, okay, that, okay. That's but, I mean, that actually, that actually makes sense in the context <laughs> of it. I can display more in a smaller space. Yeah. And I can store them in a smaller space and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. There is logic to my my logic. The is there, though? Least. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can disagree all you want, but I well, You're, I you're think scaling it's... down by, by, like, volumetric stuff, not, not actual, like, part count. <laughs> well, I mean, technically, I'm, spare, I'm scaling down by part count, too, because the smaller ones have slower part counts. So let's let's uh let's 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 park the high horse outside of the, the gate, Brandon. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's 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 lay off on John, who likes things. <laughs> Ooh, John likes Transformers. Let's let's uh let's let's roast him on that. Yeah. Well, it's been a, <laughs> it's been an endless endless pit of. Of material for me. <laughs> I mean, honestly, that's fair. It's probably yeah. going to be an endless pit of material for the rest of my life. I don't know. They just they speak to me. Dude, that is disturbing. Like that was that movie, Toy Soldiers. What's the one where there's like the commandos and then there's the uh, Toy like, Soldiers? It, yeah. Uh, I was always an Archer boy myself. Were you? Yeah, I liked Archer a lot. There, I liked that movie a lot. I had an Archer. I think I gave it to my. Yeah, I, I gave it to my niece and nephew though. So okay, because I didn't need it. Yeah, and I wasn't going to display it anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, but wait, before we go any further, yes, I need details. Details. Has there been any breaking ground on last oh. week's case? So so uh, there are no updates. But I have new theories. You have right? new theories. So there has hey, not. Yeah. There ha- There has. So in the. So it was two weeks since we recorded. Okay. Ha- have there been any in- new instances of the poop monster? So the, and yes, that is that is that is how we're opening this episode, folks. The poop monster has not made an appearance again, but, but. we have. Uh, a bunch of people who are on vacation or are at one of our other locations. Uh, so they're not at presently at this facility. So okay. my, they made their way to the suspect list, right? Cause if there's no reoccurrence and then mm-hmm. we also have this selection of people who are not in the building, that could mean that maybe one of them is the poop monster. Now we have to be careful though. Right? Yeah. Because just because they're not here doesn't mean that they're not responsible, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I've got my big uh, cork board with photographs and red uh, twine going everywhere trying to make uh, make sense of everything. So you got a crazy wall. Yeah, I got a crazy wall. <laughs> I- I'm really sorry. I was paying attention to what you were saying. Yeah. But somehow... A Godzilla thing just showed up on my feed, and I'm in yeah. love with it. Oh Someone God. did like a stop motion Godzilla with SH Monster Arts and stuff like that. And, and oh, anyhow, dope. so so we have a we have a crazy wall. Yeah, we have a crazy wall. Um, I mean that just if we're talking about if we're talking about like trying to solve this mystery and crack it, mm-hmm. that's basically just adding weights to those individuals. Yeah, and you see, Brandon, there's an important fact you might not be prepared to admit it. What's that? 
you can't discount yourself from the poop monster. And I know it wasn't me. You you think you know it wasn't you, but you don't know what you're like when you're hungry. There's you didn't have... snap into a Snickers or whatever the whatever the catchphrase is. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna sure say snap it's... into the Snickers is the new one. It's not snap into a Snickers. Snap into a Snickers. To you, it's not snap into a Snickers. <laughs> it's it's a new form of uh, it's the Slim Jim thing, right? Snap into a snap into a yeah. Snickers. Yeah, step into a Snickers. Give me a break of that Slim Jim. Lay that's, your fingers off my e- butter Snickers. That's still not even right. No. Because, <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. So, so you, so yeah. Um, if you're listening for the to this podcast for the first time, and that was awful, definitely don't listen to yes last week's episode. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> there's a poo demon at work, yeah. and uh, it also my, talking my about uh, 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 the the Godzillas. We yes. saw the Godzillas. We did see the Godzillas. I have a formal movie theater update because because it was the first time I got to check out that the the theater. There's so much legroom you can put your feet out straight in front of you, and then John decided to flex because he realized I didn't know this. That uh, (laughs) they're like powered recliners. So I just hear, and then is like the legs go up and and it starts reclining. And I was like, holy shit. And then there's little lights and I'm like, what? Heated powered reclining recliner things with tray tables. Yep. It was dope as hell. Yeah, it was pretty good. And the movie was decent. I liked it. I liked the movie a lot. My only critique is that the human plot was... Um, a Godzilla human plot. Yeah, you don't watch Godzilla movies for the human plot. They no. uh, they also missed a large opportunity. No spoilers, but there is a scene where someone is looking over the water and it's cloudy, and then you start to see the sun come out of the clouds and it starts mm-hmm. getting brighter. And they missed the perfect opportunity to put the screaming cowboy in the clouds. Well, they rather didn't... than do what they actually did. I mean, what they actually did was way more impactful in the context of the movie the screaming cowboy would have just been a uh wtf moment more than anything else yeah uh there were there were a couple wtf moments (laughs) there were there were the last line uttered by one of the characters was terrible but that that you know we come to terms with these facts we cry and then we just enjoy the monster fights yeah it was it was big on monster fights and they knew exactly what, what people are watching it for because they'd be like, here's a monster, there's a monster, we must travel. And then, like, imagine someone, like, takes a step and then when their next foot hits the ground, they're all of a sudden very far away where the other monster is at because they know that's what we want. We don't want to see you travel. We want to see monsters punch. That's fair. I mean, you got to give them credit on that, that problem yeah. for sure. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, they don't care so much about continuity or plot you know, plot <laughs> what they care about is monsters punching the shit at each other yeah and to be fair that's kind of what i cared about too so eh. yeah it, it, it was it was uh, i it, it was they knew what people were watching it for and stuck to it um yeah. it was weird though that the monkey man did make an appearance and he did not do well he is severely underscaled. You say that, but that's going to happen next next time. I wouldn't be surprised. That is that well because it's explicitly what's going to happen next time. Yeah, well, there's going to be more creatures. Y- yeah, I mean, you know, we're we're going to get dangerously into close yeah. to th- th- spoiler territory. That's why I had I... that little pause where I was like, I it... don't know how much I should say. <laughs> R- Rodan's worth the price of the ticket there oh yeah that that alone that yeah. alone is is enough oh yeah it was weird that they had that pokemon tie-in yeah that was weird ryan reynolds showing up was was strange and then like it turns out he has like the power to just transform it into detective pikachu now it's it's strange oh it'd be great if that tied into one of the deadpool movies it's going to be a joke in one of the deadpool movies it you has that, to be right yeah like the next th- the next movie that Deadpool shows up in is 
definitely going to have a Detective Pikachu. Now we got to do the actual content. Real? Uh, now we got to do have, actual stuff. I have some suggestions for how to punch up the podcast, but I'll save that for next week. Okay. Okay. Then, uh, in that case, I'll say, welcome to Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Each week, we'll take a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, paranormal, and that thing that definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I'm John, and I'm pretty sure it's a cat. It's, yeah, it's definitely cat. It's a type of cat. It's definitely a type of cat. Yeah. Like, there's no doubt in my mind on that one. Oh, yeah. That's, uh... That's actually pretty on on topic for this week. So I'm going back to, to my wheelhouse, traditional okay. old foreign folklore. Right. And uh, today's creature may be found in many cr- places across the sea, uh, including Austria, Italy, Switzerland, and more. It looks like a cat lizard. It appears, starts showing up around 17th century and is no longer seen today. Do you have uh, any guesses? A cat lizard. Like a cat lizard. A cat lizard. Yeah. Like, I, I the, th- the first thing I think of is a snallygaster, but I know that's not it. No, it's not a snallygaster. Um, I, I just want to say snallygaster because it sounds like the word has the right feel to it. But that's not it. Um... Could it be? Could it be a cat lizard hybrid? It it could be. Was is it something? Is it something draconic in nature? It could be. Are you? Are do you just have? So, I'm picturing you. There's a list of check boxes in your head, and you're just slowly and checking them. Wait, 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 like, wait, Brandon. Yeah. I got an idea. We've never done this before. Yeah. But we're gonna play Akinator. What's Akinator? That's uh basically it's a, a genie that that tells you whether or not like it, it's twenty questions. Uh, so is your character a male? Uh, it's genderless. So I'm gonna put uh, no. Is your character older than seventeen? Um, I'm gonna say yes. Okay. Is your character a famous YouTuber? I'm gonna say no. No. <laughs> no. There is, uh, there's no way it can guess a cryptid. Does your character have any kids? No, no. we're going to do this bit. Okay. Uh, is your character real? No. Uh, has your character been in a movie? I do not believe so. I'm going to put probably not for that. Is your character animated? It is not. Is your character from a TV series? It is definitely not. Does your character fight? It uh, Yes, it does. Is your character related to Marvel? I'm going to put a resounding no. no. Uh, is your character originally from a video game? I'm going to put a no on that as well. Has your character ever been in a movie? What I don't think so. Uh, is your character from a novel? No. No. Right? Okay. There's like a book? No. Manuscripts. Does your character have magical powers? Uh, magical? No. More, more like physical abilities. Okay. No. Uh, does your character come from a creepy pasta? It's getting close. It does not come from a creepy pasta. Is your character a human being? No. no. We already know that it's not. Does your character stand on two legs? Uh, it does not. Does your character have eyes? I'm going to say yes. yes. Does your character have a set? No. It does have like a peg leg. Unless it does. No, in which case, that's a wild <laughs> Four legs? Uh, it has two to six legs depending on which text you're getting it from. So, probably. <laughs> you typically does. Typically, it's just two legs. Okay, so I'm going to put no. Is your character famous parents? Probably not. No, unless it's like Satan. No. Okay. Is your character a monster? Yeah, like I said. Yeah. Is your character a monster? No. Uh, no, 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 no. One eternity later. I don't think Akinator's going to get this. I highly doubt it. So, today's topic is the Tetzel Worm. You know what? You know what? That yeah. was the thing I was trying to think of. What? Or, sure it was. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. You need Stanley Gaster to then to ask 30 questions, and, and then I say it. And you're like, oh, yeah, that's what I was thinking about. Well, I know that there's the Tatsal. The Tatsal Worm's Germanic mostly, right? Yeah, it's sort of all over, but it's, it originates uh, sort of in that Germanic uh, area. Uh, Akinator got close and uh, said Chupacabra after 30 questions. That's not too far off. Well, it... It's extremely it, far off. It's, it's extremely, extremely far, far off, off, but it's still like folklore, cryptozoology area. Yeah, I mean, th- this bit has no legs. Yeah. No. I-, I had to go through 50 questions before it got there, so. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know. Ooh, does my, does, does the, does the Tetzel Worm play Five Nights at Freddy's? I don't believe so. I hope so. Are you still going through just hoping that it gets the Tetzel Worm eventually? I am. (laughs) 
So the tadsel worm is a seven foot long lizard or serpent with the head of a cat. It has, depending on what uh, text you're going through, between zero and six legs and has poison breath and it tends to roam around the alpine regions. The name itself is Bavarian. It has a few variants, including the Dazzle Worm, the Prazzle Worm. But if I had to make one up, I'd call it the Razzle Dazzle Worm. Because why not? So the Dazzle Worm sounds like the Dazzle Worm sounds like something that uh, uh, what's his name, um, Elton John, yeah, would have on stage with him. Yeah, the Dazzle and that's, Worm. That's that's not a uh, diss at Elton John. That's literally. He would love to have a dazzle worm. That's what he calls his boa, man. It's the dazzle worm. Yeah. Yes. Right? It's perfect. It is a perfect. I think we had to get in contact with Elton John. Yeah, tell him Sir Elton should... John. Sir Elton John. We had to get in contact with Sir Elton John and say, listen, we were doing research on a 17th century cryptid, right? And one of the names that cryptid had was dazzle worm, and I think it's perfect. It is. That would be amazing. I'm going to just, from now on, I'm calling the Tazzle Worm a Dazzle Worm, by the way. Go for it, man. That, that, that is one of the alternate uh, names from Bavaria. So that's, right, well. that's nothing wrong with that. Uh, to the Swiss, it was the Stolen Worm, uh, mm-hmm. which means Tunnel Worm. And okay. um, one story goes that Johann and Thomas Tinner were in an area the locals knew as, uh, I'm going to say Halloween. I know that's not how you say it. It's Halloween. Um There's a lot of foreign places uh so i'm gonna have a lot of mispronunciation uh but they they were in an area of hollowing uh of the mountain frumson and the barony of altsax when they saw something uh at this time the locals were complaining about cattle's udders mysteriously being sucked on okay okay well at this point uh i'd like to point out one of the things that is in the show notes and it's a very, very tiny image of uh, of Quagmire yeah. from uh, Family Guy. Yeah. And uh, I'm gonna just let me just uh, let me just let me just let me just expand that room. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's about right. That's about yeah. what I was expecting. <laughs> oh, they they found the culprit out in Halloween. Uh, they described it as a cat-headed serpent. With no legs, that was about seven feet long. There were no specifics, but supposedly this creature was killed, and shortly after, the mysterious suckings had ended. Those poor cows. Those poor kids. They, you know, they might have not, but the cows might have been into it. That's the thing, <laughs> right? Yeah, the uh, that's, that's... the townsfolk were just like, "Where's my milk?" <laughs> I actually have a really good question now. Yeah. All right. How do they know that the cow's udders were being sucked on? Uh, I'm assuming it was just the cow- cows weren't producing milk. And yeah, they, but... they were making that assumption that something else was feeding on the cows. But that doesn't mean that the cows got sucked on. <laughs> they just... <laughs> Maybe someone saw something or the cows were just, like, super chill in the morning for no reason. What if? What if there was just, like, some weird dude in town who was, like going around drinking dra- directly from the udder oh like tom like, green tom green yes from... oh from the tom green show yeah 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 there's an episode and, uh, of tom got green bigger. show where he, there's a crowd of people because there's just a farmer with a cow and mm-hmm. he's dressed as a cop and he just walks right up to the cow and lays down and just drinks from straight from the tap what's tom green doing these days he's actually on tour is he really? Yeah, and I think he has a podcast. I follow him on Instagram. He was in uh, Freddy Got Fingered, right? Yes. Or am I thinking of a different one? He's no. married to. He was married to Drew Barrymore for a year. I believe it. He's got charisma, man. It's a short time period, but I guess yeah. it's Drew Barrymore, so she kind of can just. Yeah. Second husband. Are you now just diving into Tom Green and Drew Barrymore? <laughs> I need to know about this relationship now. I'm yeah. invested. Because you're just like, how'd that work? <laughs> I am. I am yeah. invested. Because this is the man, let's see, uh, he has a, a pretty impressive uh, pedigree. Wow! 
The Tom Green's show lasted six years? Because it was dope. Good on him. A lot of it's on YouTube, and he's also reposted, like, there were other people sharing it on YouTube, so I think on his YouTube channel, he's now sharing, like, full episodes. Amazing, Brandon. Yeah? He was in a sequel to one of the greatest uh, movies of all time. What's that? Uh, Iron Sky, The Coming Race. It was the sequel to Iron Sky. Yeah? Which if you'll remember was the movie in which nazis lived on the dark side of the moon oh and then invaded the earth brandon Uh, i'm astounded as a human who enjoys black sheep that you didn't know about this i did not is it like a recent movie like black sheep modern 2012 no shit okay there was a video game and adaptation well iron sky sounded like a video game uh, uh, that's what I was thinking about when you said it. So I might have seen the game but not been aware of the movie. Which would be just... weird. That is weird. Yeah, so... yeah. Um, so Andreas Raudner claimed that he had met one uh, face-to-face in 1660 on Mount Wagnersburg. Uh, when he came across its path, it stood up on its hind legs as tall as a man. It had... Uh... <laughs> oh, God. Texas wow. shifting. Sorry, I screwed up. No, it's all good. I don't care. Oh, God. I fixed it. Uh, when he came across it, it stood up on its hind legs as tall as a man. It had a mane of boar-like bristles. The creature had four legs and a crest upon its head. Uh, one person claimed that when it exhaled at him, uh, its breath caused headache and dizziness. I mean, um, that's what happens if I exhale on you after having brushed my teeth in the morning, so you know it's yeah. normal. And it's That's that, not a superpower, okay? It's not. It's, it's not. Th- it's, this is the case I think people refer to um, when they reference it having poison breath. But I think this is just severe halitosis, right? Because if or, you ever smell a cat's breath in the morning, and then you imagine that cat was seven feet tall now, that's going to be, like, ridiculous. Well, layer on top of that, right? Like, maybe he, maybe he has a cough, right? Yeah. And he had a cough drop up in there sometime in the night. And you know, you know when you have a worm? Yeah. Like okay. Conti- I'll, I'll let you continue. Oh, but okay. So, 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 like, like, have you ever had like, have you ever not been able to sleep because you're coughing so much? Because that uh, happens to me at least once a week. Yeah, that's a, that's a no for me. Okay. Well. <laughs> so for normal people who once a week, uh, you know, they have coughing fits that don't let them sleep. Um. We we sometimes take like a put a recola up under the tongue there so you don't accidentally swallow it and then in the morning you got bad breath because you know the ricola i wouldn't be able to sleep if i had a ricola in my mouth because i'd be too paranoid i was gonna swallow it and choke in my sleep you know that's one of those weird so i'm anxious about a lot of stuff yeah but there's certain things that i just don't care about and i'm fine with and that's choking to death in your sleep yeah yeah I might actually be okay with choking to death in my sleep. Let's be real. Oh, man. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, One of the earliest and most famous Tales of Worm stories involves a 14th, uh, I think I dropped the word century, but a 14th century knight named Heinrich von Winkelried. Uh, I'm going to say Winkelberg. There's no B in there. It looks like Winkelried. Well, it's Winkelberg now. Okay, Winkelberg. Heinrich von Winkelberg. Uh... I just the, like the I like the name. I think it flows better. Do you? Okay. <laughs> I think I think Winkle. I'm gonna rewrite history here. Yeah. I, I do agree that what I'm seeing is Winkle Red. Yeah. Uh, but I think Winkleberg Berg is better, and it probably would annoy that person in history. Because oh yeah, he's from the he's the from the 14th century, so that probably would be very. Upsetting. I know for a fact, it would annoy them because. Something fu- I do because I find it funny is I intentionally mispronounce people's names all the time, like specifically at work, and mm-hmm. uh, they do not enjoy it. <laughs> no, some people really hate it when you mispronounce their name. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. a huge fan of it when I was younger. When people would call me uh, Dunham, yeah, Dunham. I think one per I heard one person say Durnham once, and I was like, I don't know where that one came from. That one's that was just like a Th- there's miracle. there's a miscellaneous R in there. I don't know what like, happened. 
I, I know Durham because that's that's a common thing, right? Yeah. Because people will misread the N as like a cursive R. Yeah. Which is fine, but like, there's some there's some pronunciations of my name that are just like, what yeah. are you even talking about? Like, yeah. this is an English name. Like, it's an old English name, not even uh-huh. old English. It's like, it, it, it's not that strange of a name. It's not like mm-hmm. it's Welsh. I used to tell people that the puppet guy was your, was your uh, your cousin. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> and like way more often than not they'd be like what really and i'd be like no a lot of people would believe you at first <laughs> like an upsetting number of people would believe you <laughs> oh uh, you yeah. know what you know what he hasn't been popular in like a decade but i still sometimes get people making jokes about that He's had new specials within the last few years. Yeah, but uh, you know, I think I think uh, the time and place for racist puppets is done. It's the the audience has definitely shifted. Um, yeah, yeah, y- you don't say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so the the story of Heinrich von Winkelried um, became so popular at one point that it was later included in a book written by the brothers Grimm. Oh uh, shit. Yeah, right? I didn't know about that. That was, that was dope. I was like, no shit. Uh, Heinrich uh, must have been a big guy because he was given the nickname of uh, Schruten, which means giant. Heinrich. <sighs> wait. Wait. Wait, what? You seem very excited about something. Is that why Dwight from The Office is called Dwight Schrute? Because he's giant? Because he's tall. Is that like a in joke that they made and then no one noticed? Was Dwight tall? I don't recall Dwight being tall. Dwight was pretty tall. Like if you let's see, let's see, let's see. Dwight. I think Chris Pratt might just be short. Chris Pratt's not on the office. Oh, not Chris Pratt, the other guy. No, Chris Pratt was in the office. No, Cr- Brandon. Am I Chris think- Pratt was Parks and Rec. Who am I thinking of? You're thinking of G- the guy who played Jim. Oh, Halpers, I was John totally Krasinski. mixing up uh, Parks and Rec in the office. John like, Krasinski, characters. Brandon. Yeah, Brandon. John Krasinski. Yeah, he's six three. Oh, is he? Uh, I guess. I guess he was taller. I just imagined Dwight as being bigger. I don't know. Oh, Dwight is in the new uh, uh, season one of Star Trek Discovery, and he, he? plays a fantastic uh, uh, Harry Mudd. Like he, he does a really good job. Playing that character. Is there supposed to be something going on with Picard? Because I saw, like, an advertisement. For Picard. Yeah, so there's going to okay. be a Picard series. Okay, um, okay. A new one. And it's basically, from what I understand, Picard's life after he retires. Because he retired, um, I think, not long after TNG ended, like, story-wise. Uh, okay. um, and there is... Um, uh, Brenner is reappearing as Data, but I don't believe it's a physical appearance. Fuck yeah! I, th- I think it might just be like voice stuff because uh, uh, he did quit um, Star Trek saying that he felt he was too old to play Data because his androids don't age. Well, Data decided to age. Yeah. Which would be a totally, honestly. That'd be totally a Data thing. Char- to do. That would be totally yeah. in character for Data. Yeah. Like, Data, oh, yeah. Would, Data would totally be like, you know what? I'm going to modify my body so I look older. Yeah. Because th- I think that's the right thing to do. He would yeah. totally do that. Um, so Heinrich, uh, was unfortunately kicked out of the town of Unterwalden, uh, but that's when a creature began causing damage to the town and destroying, or perhaps mysteriously sucking, cattle. God damn it, Tom Green. Get out God of here! God damn it! Several groups had went out to kill this creature with crossbows, but seeing that, like, a group coming, it scurried up the mountain into a cave, right? So it's smart, it's like, I'm not gonna fight them. It runs away to a cave. Heinrich asked that if he could single-handedly kill the monster, that he be let back into town, and they agreed. So he hiked up the mountain into a cave. Uh, the worm, uh, seeing him alone, came out to fight, opening its maw, but Heinrich was too badass and hacked it to death and held his sword over his head in victory. He thanked God. Although the story doesn't end there, because the blood dripped down from the sword onto his hand, and poisoned Heinrich, and he died two days later. (laughs) (laughs) 
I love it. That's that's some like um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like that level of ineptitude that yeah. is like you really can't even begin to describe how inept that is. Yeah, like when we see that video of the guy uh running a race and he does like the victory arms in the air before he gets to the the ribbon yes, and the other yes. guy just sprints past him <laughs> yeah there was the one guy who did the, the like at the end of a marathon he jumped up and down like a woohoo and he tripped and like yeah. it was over <laughs> like he pulled a muscle and it was yeah. like oh shit i've 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 ruined everything like and he had a convincing lead too yeah if he hadn't done that he would have been fine yeah um heinrich also supposedly killed a few guys in a bar and that's why he got kicked out of town i didn't include that however because there was only i didn't find enough sources that said that part in the same way for me to think that it was like <laughs> legit legit yeah well i mean i'm also not convinced that heinrich wasn't the one uh suckling on the udders oh no <laughs> right like oh mm-hmm. yeah yeah, you guys are gonna give me some. You're gonna give me some. You're gonna kick me out of town. Well, it would be a shame if someone went around all those cows and just you know did a little. Oh god, he's right. He's running around drunk on milk, just swinging his sword around. Listen, <laughs> listen. If the the Apoyo, uh if the Apoyo family wedding taught yeah. me anything, milk can be disastrous, especially if there's bath salts mixed in. Oh yeah, like Epsom. Whew. Don't get me no. started. <laughs> the poops you'll get. Oh, yeah. The poops you'll get from Epsom salt. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> let's let's not make light of Epsom salt. That will, it'll destroy you. Yeah. <laughs> it's a diuretic. Yeah, that's true. The diuretic it's... means it makes you pee. <laughs> Does it? Yeah. <laughs> it's confusing because it sounds a lot like diarrhea. But, uh, they are like the peepees. Then what am I thinking? What's the thing that makes you poop? Laxative? I no. think Epsom might be actually be a, uh, a laxative. It's a laxative. Yeah. Yeah. Look at it. Live well, learning. Oh, I thought laxative was like the well, purgatives. Thought... Purgatives? Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Purgatives? Diuretic is frequently used for poop, though. Okay. I, I feel like people say it. I think they just say because it sounds like diarrhea. I think I think it might be one of those cases. Because I I I thought the same thing for a long time until someone corrected me and I was like, what? Why does it sound so similar to the poop thing? Purgative is also a good word because that sound that could be anything coming out of anywhere. Yeah. Like if you just take something that makes you uh, do stuff. <laughs> yeah. You can lose weight with a diuretic though. Well, yeah, because it's water weight. You're you're peeing out all your water. This is not interesting podcasting because I'm just learning yeah. about a word that I, I misunderstood. And now <laughs> I feel like an idiot in a way because it's like one of those things where I'm like, I've used that to say I've used diuretic so many times meaning something else. I'm, I feel like it's that feeling of when you know someone doesn't understand the word that they're using, but they're using it anyways. And you're watching them use it. And you don't want to say anything because you don't want to embarrass them. But, like, there's a part of you that's just kind of like, why are you using that word if you don't understand it, really? That's fine. When I'm reading, I still read in my head the word colonel is colonel. And I have to pause and go, that's colonel. And then keep going. Uh, yeah. Uh, for a while, when I was a kid, that really messed me up for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Ender's Game is a weird right? ride. That's, exa- that, that's exactly the, like what i'm talking about like ender's game because they say colonel so much in that book a lot like they say so much a lot yeah 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 so that that was a trip that was i think that's also one is reading like the star wars books uh one of the more recent deaths caused by tatsa worm is in 1779 by hans fox um yeah it, it was Fuchs uh, until he went to college. Oh, okay, yeah, that's yeah. true. He was hiking in the mountains when he saw two large creatures. Struck with horror, he ran home as fast as he could to tell his family. Upon arrival, he described them as between five and seven feet long, serpent-like with bodies, two clawed front legs, and the head of a cat. Hans then had a heart attack. Good. Go- good? What do you mean good? Yeah. 
I mean, then we don't have to hear about how he fucks anymore. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and I, yeah. I want to point out, I said that with an F-U-C-H. C-H. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another story is of a um, about the little girl of a farmer's family on the Oberhof, um, which I guess is a Swiss common name, um, okay. was ordered to cut bean poles in the mountain forest of Saal, S-A-A-L. Um she was so busy with the stem of a young fir, which stood on a tree, uh, three evenly protruding roots from around a stool, forming a large hollow underneath. After the first cut of the axe, uh, here's what, where I like to pause. Don't give your little girl an axe. No, nah, I mean, not when good. was this? When was this? Uh... Like, so, it, 1987 is when the book was written, but I think it's referencing a story from, like, the s- late like to early 1800s. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, let's be real. Kids is different then. Kids is di- yeah. They just had like, an axe. Once once you're eleven, in those times, you're basically an adult. Yeah. I mean, you even up until like the ni- early nineties, mm-hmm. early nineteen hundreds, that was a thing. Like you did listen to the Newsboy Riots episode, right? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Dollop Newsboy Riots. Very interesting episode. Uh, some of the most intelligent striking I've ever heard of in the history of, like, labor disputes. Yeah. And by it was children. carried out by children. Yeah. It was fantastic. Yeah. Um, so after the first, uh, swing of the axe, a young stolen worm, uh, like, which is that regional dialect yeah. version of, uh, tassel worm, emerged from underneath and attacked the child. It was mm. green color, uh, not quite as long as an arm, the mid-body was about the thickness of a cat, and it had two upright, rounded ears, fleshy and hairless, mm. and walked on two short front legs with two small, wide paws. Thus was the whole appearance cute, uh, cute? only at, yeah, that's what I don't know, that's what I said, cute, uh, only at the front of the head sat two strangely huge eyes, as big, uh, this is like, it sounds kind of adorable. It, I mean, it like, sounds if you like ignore, a like, thing. It, if you like sphinx cats, yeah, right. It sounds like an adorable sphinx, but yeah. I'm not a huge fan of sphinxes. Yeah, I'll be the first to say that. But you know, it's yeah. each their own. They're all cats. All cats all, is great, and they're all monsters. Like they're all not, monsters. Like just because the tassel worm has a weird tail and breath that like is pollution, that yeah. doesn't mean. That doesn't mean that it's any le- any more of a monster than my cat that's sitting downstairs. Yeah, my cat found a new way to knock stuff off of things. She mm. started doing it with her her tail instead of her paws. Oh, that's clever. Yeah, so she'll like find something, like look at it, turn around and like line herself upright, then look at you and just smash it with her tail. And be like, what are you gonna do about it? <laughs> wow, that's a bold that's a bold strat right there. Yeah. And then she like walk up and be like, "I don't want pets now." <laughs> it would be a shame if that happened again. So where are my yeah. pets? Uh, so, so the uh, tassel worms had eyes uh, as big as little wheels, which I find a weird piece of writing, and as I mean, bright as stars. So it had glo- large, glowing eyes. Uh, I mean, these are wheels, right? Yeah, right. Those are little wheels, and these are wheel- little wheels as well. Yeah, I don't Which think they had Transformers when the story was written, though. Well, I have Transformers on hand for, for physical reference. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so she was... Uh, bu- 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 oh, yeah. So the extremely bright glance made the kid flee immediately. Um, that, that was about it. She, she just sort of ran away. She's now 70 years old. Yeah. And a widow. Yeah. So she's probably dead now. Oh, yeah, because that was hundreds of years ago. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Hey, I, you don't you don't know. Maybe she was, like, immortal. Yeah. I don't know. I don't maybe, know. Maybe, maybe she's... A Highlander? Took, yeah, something like that. She regenerates. But there could only be one. So we'll see. We will see. In the summer of 1717... An herb collector and root digger named Joseph Schur from, oh, geez. Well, how do, what's the A with the two dots over it? 
Uh, it's not an umlaut, but... I'm going to say naples. <laughs> naples? Yeah, I know that's wrong, Nifl- so I'm just going to lean thought, into I it. Think, I thought it was like a, like you extend it. Naples? Naples. 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 Naples, okay. Extended... Okay. A, lowercase, blah, 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 doesn't have a name, uh, is a character that represents a letter from several extended Latin alphabets. Or the letter A with an umlaut mark or dire diuresis. Oh, uh, okay. I'm going with Naples. Uh, he was busy at the foot of Garnish. Whew. Her shirt's a zoggin. There we go. Got it. Nailed it. Uh, yeah. I, no one can dispute that. N- yeah, because no one could hear what you said. Yeah. <laughs> Her shirt's a zoggin. Garnish. Here she's a Wow. So this is this is uh this is some this is some low ball quality it's low grade quality right here. Yeah. <laughs> like Hey man, it's, it's, we got weird energy today. I don't know why. I've got weird energy because I got three hours of sleep on Thursday and then maybe four hours of sleep last night. Like solid Ooh. sleep. Nice. And for the entirety of that, I had a weird nightmare that I only remember bits and pieces of. Yeah. Um, but it was strange because it was like a fusion of Kingston and Poughkeepsie, and I was walking around it, which I haven't done that since Pokemon Go. So, mm-hmm. um, because I don't leave my house anymore. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> I I I no one noticed, but you know how people. So I was at work, and I just realized, like, for like, my fly was just full open for a oh, while. That happens, that happens to me a lot. Oh, does it? Yeah, I mean, the problem is, the problem is, like, sometimes your fly will like pretend to be closed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it will naturally lie closed, mm-hmm. and then out of nowhere, you realize it, and then it's like full open, like a flower. <laughs> <laughs> It's the flower to the crotch. It's a weird looking stamen you got there. Uh, <laughs> it's not that different from a normal stamen. I mean, it looks more like a pistol than a stamen, but you know. Watch your mouth. Hey, ooh. <laughs> Whilst this boy was picking flowers of all sorts, suddenly he gave a loud shriek. What's the matter? His father called over, but the boy gave no reply and only stared with a pale face and horror filled eyes at a big rock. The father found that strange. That uh, could have taken a turn. Yeah, no, it could have taken... Yeah, oh, yeah, no, if there was a typo. Oh, mm-hmm. boy. The father found that strange, uh, so he left his bundle of herbs and hurried over. And from beneath the the block of rock hissed a gruesome animal whose cat-like head uh, with wild protruding eyes were sparkling. As soon as he tried to shoo the cat beast away. Also, why would you try to shoo it? I would just scream and run away. Yeah, I'd just leave. Yeah, just scoop. I mean, generally speaking, trying to... So, if it's... With cats, shooing them away is generally not something I recommend. And now, the reason I say that is because sometimes cats will just take that as an invitation to just like... Oh, yeah? Oh, we're going to play now. This is a fun game. Well, when you try to shoo them, they don't know what you're saying. They just see that you're giving them some form of attention. So they... Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Also, never turn your back to anything other than a cheetah. (laughs) That's right. They might try to suck your milk. Yeah. Well, well, cheetahs will give you purrs. Mm -hmm. Because they're not... The the way cheetahs work, they're not ambush animals. Yeah, they they don't stalk. They they, uh, They 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 get the zoomies. they, They just zoomie at things. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas like a lion or a leopard will be they, they kinda like erase their presence and do stealth things. Yeah. That's why people um like uh South uh Asia and that will have wear like things with eyes on the back of their heads. Like a bandana with eyes or a hat that they've they've drawn eyes on so that they don't get uh, ambushed. Yeah. Yep. Uh no, it it makes sense. Yeah. So as soon as he tried to shoot the cat beast away, it stirred and the whole body became visible. Four short legs armed with claws carried a spotted body, uh, which was covered with scales and was about as thick as a half-filled pitcher. Um, I mm. don't know what that means. 
Uh, okay. But that's what was written. So a half filled pitcher. That's that's weird. Yeah. The animal whipped the long tail excitedly side to side. So that that seems cat like. And Is it? She, yeah. That's that's more doggo like unless they're like flick, talking about the flick. That flick, There's, you know? Like it's not flick. a wag, but it's like a like like a, a slam like they slam their tail to the side then to the other side. It's it's the thing where you know if you're not careful, you're about to get you're about to get pounced. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You're about to get pounced. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it whipped its tail excitedly side to side, and surely it would have jumped at the two people if the herb gatherer wouldn't have quickly sharpened a stick and pierced the animal with it. So this thing let him whittle. He just got to whittle the whole So, uh, either A, he's a really good whittler. Yeah. Or B, the Tazzle Worm has literally no self-preservation instinct, which, being a cat, probably true. Yeah, that's actually, yeah, 100% true. Uh, to Shur's amazement, the stick penetrated the flesh easily, as if it had pierced a slab of butter. But poisonous, stinking blood shot out of the wound, and a few drops got onto the bo- botanist's legs, which immediately swelled up massively, so that Shur could only limp home with great difficulty. Over a month, he had to salve and doctor until the swelling finally vanished. Eventually, uh, convinced the herbalist had killed a dragon, um... Although it was only about two feet long. Oh, so I guess that's why he didn't run. It was two feet long. And uh, consequently, must have been a very young one. Um, yeah. Huh. So, that's so th- a thing. Th- th- yeah, it was a thing. That happens after the tale of, I think? Yeah, after the tale of um, Ooh. Big Phil up there. So I think they're, they're starting to pull stories Ooh. from each other now uh, at this point in time. Or at I least pull aspects that. of stories. Oh, so this happened after the one that the Brothers Grimm had uh, <laughs> recorded. So oh, I'm okay. thinking so... by this point in time, they're starting to draw, um, like, different parts of different stories are starting to bleed together and make new stories. Yeah, that's usually how it goes. Yep. Uh, um, more recently, I, yeah. I do want to point out Lindworm. Yeah. Um, that's, that's the name of a pretty decent dragon in... Dragalia loss, that's all. Is it? Does it look yeah, kind of okay. like a kitty? No. Oh. Not at all. Yeah, no, Lindworm was another regionalism for um this one. The, these stories are just from all over. Um, yeah, no, no, no. I, yeah. I, I figured as much. Yep, I just sort of picked one and ran with it. Uh, more recently, in July 1883, or 1884, depending who you ask, Casper Arnold saw a tattle worm on the Spielberg near... Hotfeldson, uh, Tyrol, Austria. I I see nothing wrong with your pronunciation. No, I'm I'm pretty there's, much there's, nailing it this time. There's no way you can improve. That's patently true. No one could ar- argue with that. He watched it from a mountain restaurant uh, for 20 minutes and was certain it had only two legs. Hmm. It, in 1921, so we're getting pretty freaking modern now. A two-legged tassel worm. Uh, leaps nine feet into the air toward two witnesses near Rauis, Salzburg, Austria. In the summer, it was gray and about two or three feet long and had the head of a cat. So it wasn't a cat, though? No, it, it was like a, well, two-legged tassel worm. So body of a snake, two clawed front legs, head of a cat. What if, no it was a cat what if it was a cat that didn't have back legs? That poor kitty. I mean, it would be sad for the kitty, but couldn't it be? Well, no, I mean, that'd be ridiculous. It jumped nine feet into the air. Uh, yeah, I'm not all that surprised. I mean, if it only had its front legs, it'd be a lot harder. But cats can't jump nine feet in the air. Uh, my cats can jump from the floor to the top of the refrigerator if they want. They just choose not to. Yeah, they gotta add three feet to that jump if they want to get to nine feet, though. I, I I think for properly motivated, Jiro could pull it off. Okay. I'll buy it. He is a weird demon. He is a weird demon, and you have seen him fly. Yes. So <laughs> Yes, I have. <laughs> that was that was such a great moment because it was like, see? He is the devil. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, what's he looking at up there? Whoa! <laughs> Pretty much. Like, he had airtime. 
No, he, the weird thing was, it's like he broke the laws of gravity for a second. Yeah. Like, because it was a slow jump to a high place. Yeah, it, that's the weirdest thing. Is like it was. It, it was like he was accelerating in the air. Yeah. But not not a negative acceleration. Yeah, and he's. I don't think anyone knows this, but Jiro, pitch black, green eyes, but he's got <laughs> a crazy long tail. Yes, like two inches short of the longest tail in the world. Yeah, like it's it's ridiculous. It's, like it's, nearly nearly record holder. Yeah. It's like, to the point that every other cat's tail now looks short to me, even my other cat, and I feel terrible yeah. about that. <laughs> it's not about the length of the tail. It's about, yeah, it's the, about uh, how you use it to knock things over. Yeah, it's about how you use it to knock things over and then ignore people. Yeah. In 1924, a five-foot-long snake skeleton, uh, sorry, not a snake skeleton, a five-foot-long skeleton allegedly found by two men who said it resembled, resembled a lizard's. Um, was found. And I think that might have made its way into a museum. Um, okay. That one I'm not sh- sure about. In 1934, a Swiss photographer named Balkan claimed to have photographed a tatsa worm near Mirigan, Switzerland. Uh, <laughs> but this photo was probably faked and was the image of a ceramic fish. I love it. Like, yeah. that's so not trying. Yeah. Like, uh, like there's the pictures are out there in, in the links. They're like, it's clearly like a ceramic fish. In the summer of 1969, a local man reported a 30 inch long animal with two hind legs near Langstang, uh, Trentino, Alte, Adigi, Italy. Uh, it seemed to be inflating its neck. I think that one was also like plasticky looking. It's like the, uh, the, whatchamacallit, um, the basilisk from Jurassic Park. Yeah. Or yeah. what was it? What was it called? I don't know. It looks like a basilisk lizard. Yeah, they they like fan. I think that actually might be. Is that it? The basilisk lizard? I don't know. Coll- I, well, collared know... lizard? Is that what they're called? Oh, collared. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. For whatever reason, I thought basilisk, but that's not it. Because basilisks are the ones that run on the water. Gotcha. Uh, in the 1960s. A photograph emerged which was supposedly taken of the mysterious creature. This was given to the Geneva newspaper from a source unknown. Most researchers and cryptozoologists who have seen the photo are in agreement that it is probably a hoax. So it's mm. bad when you got the cryptozoologist going, nah, that's that's fake. Yeah, um, if, a cryptozo- if a cryptozoologist says, nah, that's fake, in reference yeah. to a picture of a cryptid, it's definitely fake. Yeah, and they suspect that this was most likely faked by the mayor of a Bavarian town attempting to attract tourists. Of course. In 1970, reports of an alleged tetzel worm were published in the Swiss newspaper La Tribune de Geneva by Georges Hardy. Uh, What? Just in 1970, they're... uh, Okay. okay. Like, they're super short. They're not even worth, like, including for... uh, it, to some extent um it's gotcha. just that i'm working my way up to more recent shit now uh in 1990 two naturalists found the skeleton of a lizard-like animal in the alps near dama do Salala in italy uh giuseppe costale saw a gray crested reptile moving in a zigzagging fashion on pizzo cor- cor- oh, that's a normal one too pizzo cronia uh in the same area on two different occasions, on October 1991 and September 1992. In the year okay. 2000, a strange skeleton was forwarded to a local college. Some scientists at the time said it was the first physical proof of the alpine tetzel worm. Okay. Uh, I hesitant, hesitate to call them scientists, especially after looking at this image. Uh, along with the skeleton came a sizable donation... Uh, the original owner of the skeleton remains a mystery. The law firm of Gehunter House Limited in Germany handled the donation and refuses to, to divulge the name of the contributor or why the Geneva Institute was selected to be the recipient. That, that's all, that all bodes extremely well for the authenticity. Yeah, nothing suspicious at all. Here's this clearly fake thing as well as a large donation through a third-party company. That's really strange. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. If if I was a if I was being that I am a suspicious person, uh-huh. 
because I am so so I'm not nature naturally naturally suspicious. Uh huh. This is a thing not a lot of people know about me. I'm not a naturally suspicious suspicious person. Yeah. But uh, because I am willing to believe very easily, I have to impose a filter on top of my brain. Yeah. That makes me suspicious. <laughs> It, it, there's a whole bunch of it, it's it's a whole bunch of like terrible things that make my life a lot harder in some ways but you know brains are fun anywho uh <laughs> the the suspicious thing i'm feeling is the uh what is it called the geneva institute yeah i think that they may have made a fake tatsum worm donated it to themselves and uh, maybe laundered some money in the process. Oh, maybe. I, what I'm trying to say is the Geneva Institute is just a mattress firm. Yeah. <laughs> in uh, in 2009, many reports were made in the Trezivio area of Italy. Near, I just want to pause and say I read that with that stumbling or stuttering. And you actually got it right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, think, as soon I as think, it came out I of think. my mouth, I went, ooh. And then, and then, Brandon, you acknowledged it. Yeah. And your your achievement. Just. <laughs> just dust He's... in the wind. Oh. Dust in the wind. <laughs> A thousand yeah. candles in the wind. Yeah. Uh, near the Swiss border, authorities chalked up most of these reports to a missing missing monitor lizard that may have escaped from their masters. I find it weird that in 2009, a place is still calling, like, animal owners masters. Yeah, um, that is weird. Yeah. Some of the sightings were even said to be of a raptor. Uh, so, again, modern dinosaurs. What the mm, fuck? Wait, um, wait, what? So, like, now, it's really important to know what version of raptor they're talking about, because if they're talking about... Not birds. Yeah, I know, but like, so are they talking about a velociraptor? Are they talking about a Utah raptor? Because those are two very different things. They're very different things. If it's 2009, I don't think it it matters. Because <laughs> I can I can I can tell you what it's probably not. If, I, if it's if the probably... choices are monitor lizard or actual dinosaur, <laughs> I'm going with monitor lizard. Yeah, but where's the fun in that? If you if you believe it's an actual dinosaur, then you know, maybe I maybe there's a chance that I'll be eaten by a T Rex one day. Maybe that'd be a way to go. Probably not fun. Eh, you know, it'd probably be quick. Let's be real. Probably. I mean, it'd probably bite you, and then you lose all sensation, and then you die. Yeah, I bet I could fight a T. Well, how big was a T Rex? Uh, like 13, 15 feet tall? I think they were closer to 20, but let me check. I think I could fight. I think I could probably kill a T-Rex. Yeah? I don't think they're fast. I think I think if I have, like... Cause yeah? I've got I've got a machete from when I used to... Um, for There's a class at school where you had to basically have your own machete. Because um, you had to like, oh. go out and learn how to do, like, surveying and stuff like that. Um... If I think if I had a machete and ran up real close machete. to it, yeah. So they're twelve feet tall at the hips, um, uh, and forty feet long. I think that size is mostly only an advantage when you're dealing with creatures of similar scale. I think that I would be able to run up to a T Rex. Like I think it could get one attack in if I dodge it then the time before it try can actually do something of, of, of meaningful value to me. I, I think that would be a, be a longer time than it would take for me to get right up to, like, its guts and be like, step, 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 and then run away. Brandon. Brandon. Yeah? I took high school gym with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say any more. <laughs> Okay, but... good point, good point. <laughs> <laughs> I was there. <laughs> if I wasn't there, I I don't know how, what your pace would have been when we had to, like, run the mile, like, walk the mile. Yeah. 
So it still wasn't good, even with. <laughs> well, that's because that's because John isn't good. <laughs> Yeah, in my defense, <clears throat> didn't really put a lot of effort into Jim because I didn't see it as being any value later in life. <laughs> well, because you didn't know that you were going to be attacked by a T-Rex. Right? If I had known that, <laughs> I would have trained better. Oh, uh, let's see. Only the oldest, <laughs> there's only halfway through one paragraph. Only the oldest residents of Trezavillo... Uh, called the mysterious creatures by the name they had always known them as Basilisco or Basilisk, which was the Italian name for the tetzel worm. Of course. Mm-hmm. Although Basilisk was also a different thing as well. Yeah, Basilisk. Well, Basilisks are, that's the name of an actual animal. But they also are. a legendary animal. So you yeah. have to just not get them confused when having normal conversation. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't usually have normal conversation about Basilisks. Yeah. Uh, it is worth noting that the modern sightings or hoaxes of the tatsu worms so far have, for the most part, abandoned the large cat-headed dragon idea and more towards the big two-legged salamander idea, as seen in the faked image below, because it's a plastic toy. Um, but once we started getting to, like, 1990, all the, the what they were describing was of a big old salamander-type deal. Which salamanders uh, can get pretty big, if I remember correctly, right? They can, but there's, uh, I think it was the the Chinese, there's an endangered species. Um, I think we might have addressed it in the cap episode. Chinese uh, giant salamander. Yeah. 3.8 uh, feet. Mm? That's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, uh, the creature's existence was accepted as fact in the Alps, uh, and it had appeared in several books on uh, alpine natural history and hunting alongside more animals. Swiss naturalist Frederick von Tiscondi uh, was convinced of the reality of the creature when he wrote in 1861 that in Bernese Oberland and the Jura, uh, the belief is widespread that there were uh, there exists a sort of cave worm which is thick. 30 to 90 centimeters long and has two short legs. It appears uh, at the approach of storms after a long dry spell. In 1828, a peasant on the southern canton found a uh, a dried up marsh and <clears throat> put it alongside to take uh, take it to Professor Hughie. Uh, but in the meantime, the crows ate half of it. <laughs> so the skeleton <laughs> was taken to the town of Solothurn where... Uh, <laughs> they could not decide what it was and sent it to Heidelberg where all traces of it were lost. So that's it's that's so freaking convenient. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh yeah. That's that's do- that's that's dog eat my homework level convenience. Yeah. At like three in three different stages. Like, oh no, it's really I had a whole one, but I set it aside to take it to you, but when I left to go get it, crows ate it. Yeah. Uh so then here you go, and then that place sends it somewhere else and just disappears. <laughs> In the 1930s, so, Doc. Wait, yeah. Before we go on, I just remember it. I think there was one instance in which my dog mm-hmm. actually ate my homework. I had one of my old cats actually eat my homework. Yeah. Once. Yeah. Like it's. Yeah. It's awful. Yeah, because they do that thing where uh, I don't know if they your cats do this, but they, 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 they go like yeah, paper cardboard boxes or whatever. They they hold it down. And, take a bite, shake their head, drop it, and they just do that until the entirety of whatever they're doing to is destroyed. Yeah, they don't even eat it, they just destroy it. Yeah. Like, it's like a spitefulness. Yeah, like, you'll like, I'll show up home, there's half a cardboard box is missing, and just little pieces of it all over. <laughs> it's like, I kept that box so you could sit in it. Not so yeah. you can choose it. Yeah. I do have, I have cardboard boxes in my living room that have been there for years because they're the cat's boxes. They're decoy boxes. Yeah. Right? That, the boxes are important. You need... It's it's like a... You, you gotta put some... like a smoke screen down for cats. Yeah. You need... You do need toys for cats. Otherwise, they will destroy your life. Oh, yeah. that's They've got a toy box, which is also adorable when you see them, like, put a toy back into the toy box. <laughs> we had the toy box for Jiro, uh, but he abused the toy box, so the toy box got taken oh. away. 
<laughs> I just discovered uh, a large portion of the toys that uh, I had to replace. Because, like, huh, I wonder what happened to these. It turns out they made their way in between the kitchen counter and the refrigerator. Of course they did. And then some are also just under the couch, but more than you would think. Um uh, in the 1930s, Dr. Gerard Vensmer and Hans Fulcher uh, collected the evidence of 60 witnesses. Mm. All agreed it was 30 to 60 centimeters long, cylindrical in shape, and with a tail that ended abruptly. It had a large, blunt head that grew directly into its body with no narrowing of the neck area. The eyes were large and the body was scaled, and it hissed like a snake. That sounds an awful lot like either a monitor lizard or a salamander or something. Yeah. Uh, There have even been sightings farther south in Europe as well. Similar creatures have been reported from France, Italy, and Sicily. There was even a report that sounds very like the tassel worm from Denmark in June of 1973. Although most authorities have treated the tassel worm as a mystery reptile, others disagree. An Austrian schoolmaster, this is Australian Austrian, Austrian schoolmaster uh, who came... Yeah, who came across one in 1929 while exploring a cave in Tempelmauer, believed it to be a giant salamander. Okay. Yep. Uh, I started... I'm just going through this guy wrote. I started to look at the entrance of the cave when suddenly I saw a snake-like animal sprawled on the rotting foliage covering the ground. Its skin was almost white, not covered by scales, but smooth. The head was flat... Yeah, right? some Gorgo-level stuff. Yeah, exactly. The uh, the head was flat, and, and it had two very short feet on the forepart of its body. My tassel worm did not have large claws, but short, atrophied-looking feet. This length did not exceed 40 or 45 centimeters. Most probably, the tassel worm is a rare variety of salamander living in the moist caves and only rarely coming to the light of day. That sounds reasonable. Yeah. Over the past 10 years, the people of Trezevio uh, in the Valencia Valley at the region of Italy over the Swiss border made repeated sightings of an unusual creature described as an agile bipedal lizard uh, about a meter tall and nearly two meters long. Uh, it's the not first... just a normal basilisk lizard? Where are basilisk lizards even from? Well, meters are... That's pretty big. Oh, honestly. that's three feet. Yeah. I see. My brain, My brain was... Using barbaric uh, measures. Meter is a meter like two point five four feet or something like so that. I, a meter is like th- I use a three feet or a meter. That's a yard. Like ra- yeah, but a yardstick and a meter stick are the same thing usually. It's a little over a meter, but three feet yeah. is my estimate. The uh, the first sightings. Uh, the paper reported in the summer of 2009 was regarded as an isolated incident and had been made a few years ago. A young student of agricultural sciences spotted the animal, but at the time nobody believed her. Now an assistant researcher, she stands by her report. I was not dreaming, exclamation point, so I'm pretty sure she's fed up with this shit. She's like, I was not dreaming. I she saw it clearly dreaming. with my own eyes. It was approaching me, walking on its hind legs. The anterior legs were very small. It resembled a prehistoric velociraptor, and generally it was like a monitor lizard. Yet, the monitors have four legs, and this one went upright on two. Its back was nearly 80 centimeters above the ground, with the head uh, nearly a meter. Uh, I guessed it was one and a half or two meters long. That's uh, a really big creature. That's pretty big. I, um, I also... That's also, a Gorgo. Yeah, it is a Gorgo. It's a short Gorgo. Yeah. Anytime someone screams, I was not dreaming, I always believe exactly what they're going to say next was not a dream. Oh, yeah. I'm not full of shit. And then they continue. You're like, oh, it's weird I'm if not- you preface something with that. I'm not racist, but... <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Uh, yeah. I'm not racist, but those are pretty dope shoes. Yeah, right? Yeah. It's weird that you say you're not racist before that. I mean... Yeah. Not racist, but damn, this is a pretty good hamburger. Well, what is that supposed to even mean? Yeah. <laughs> Imagine if you, someone said, I'm not racist, but something not actually not racist yeah and then when someone questions them what they mean they immediately say something racist 
Oh, not going to do that one. Exactly. <laughs> that's why I, that's why I showed I, I I told the joke instead of showing the joke. Yeah. It's ever it, everyone knows it's funnier to explain the joke than it is to tell the joke. Yes, but some jokes they're funny in my head, but I'm not going to be the person who pulls that trigger. Yeah. <laughs> These memories were published because the monster appeared in July 2009, observed on several occasions by local witnesses from Trezivio and Ponte. Uh, it is not an iguana. 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 It is, it is less massive when he saw it running, they told a local uh, paper, which noted that many people now no longer doubt it with the summer and the warmth of the, st- the strange reptile comes out of hiding. Uh, a fruit farmer from Ponte did see it in July. I had parked my tractor above the village uh, on the road near Val Fra- Fontana. <sighs> I have to stop doing places with lots of different languages. Yeah. Uh, it, it looked like a lizard with a long tail, and it resembled a kangaroo. Actually, no, I can't tell you what I was going to say, because I, I already have something for next week. Um, or not next week, the two weeks from, four weeks from now? Whatever my next one is. But it had scales, therefore it must have been a reptile. In October 2009, an anonymous called the local newspaper to report that he had encountered a very curious reptile on the banks of Longhila River near the Maracosta and the Valorona. It was uh, weird too because he went out of his way to say they do not he did that he did not forgive and he did not forget. <laughs> um, yeah. Then then he demanded a sharpie placed in an area that the shun- sun doesn't shine. Uh, sharpie butts a lot? Are you referencing Dan Harmon? No, but that was a thing. Like, there was a meme for a while about, like, putting sharpies in places. Dan Harmon be- had a D&D character ba- called Sharpie butts a lot based off the time he put a sharpie in his butt. Uh, I mean, there was a whole thing where people put sharpies in their butt. Okay. Like back in the early tens, early teens. Is it like, like uncapped? Is it not like uncapped. Boofing? Not uncapped. Not uncapped. Okay. It was like it was like a proof that you were a real person or something. I, oh. I, like like um now people will post a picture of themselves with their user holding up a piece of paper hold it with their username. To prove that they are the thing, people used to put a sharpie, insert a sharpie, to do yeah, the same thing. Put in their butt. <laughs> yeah. We should return to those days. Should we? Yeah. Reddit would be weird. I think they wrote. I think they wrote like I like the the timestamp on like an area that was visible as well, and like a cheek. Yeah. Oh, I think we should actually return to that. I like that. Uh, do you? Well, like, it would make browsing Reddit way more interesting. It would be way harder to browse, or d- browse during work at all. It, it would. The uh, the celebrity ask me anything. They'd start to get wild. real interesting. <laughs> real interesting real fast. Yeah, like instead of a celebrity holding up a sign that's like, you know, Amy, at this date and time, it's just like the edge of someone's butt cheek. I got an honest question for you. Yeah. Who do you think would be the most horrifying to see? Celebrity to do that? To do that, to do an AMA in Those Are the Rules. Who do you think the celebrity that would be the most horrifying would be? Uh, the uncle from Viva La Bam. All right. I honestly can't I can't come up with a better answer. <laughs> yeah, I think I nailed it right out of I the think, gate. I think you got it in one. <laughs> I, I think that this bit is dead. Yeah. <laughs> He had seen it on one or two occasions on October 4th and 5th. He thought it was a monitor lizard, an iguana, or possibly a caiman. Um, And he was certain it was a reptile about a meter long and had previously noted that the duck's disappearance in the river. So it shows up and there's a loss of ducks. uh, Or there had been a giant carp, uh, which some had claimed to, uh, to have seen. Cryptozoologists think that the tonsil worm may be a rare large salamander, Gila monster, otter, or Mexican bull lizard. Uh, my thoughts personally are that it is a 
super old cool story from long ago that's very popular, and more recently it might still be a cool story, but people are less likely to buy into a cat-headed dragon and are more likely to believe a big poisonous salamander um, that has few uh, features resembling the original, especially uh, when this many hoaxed pictures surface. Yeah, I mean, hypothetically, it could be some undiscovered species of thing, but Occam's razor does point to it not being that. Yeah. It, it, it Occam's razor more or less says, yeah, it might be misidentification, but until we have a, until we have a type specimen, it's just an identification. Yeah. That's, that's all I got for that. Oh yeah. That's it. it it's yeah. It's a cool story, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's the, the original inter- incarnation almost like almost 100% didn't exist. The newer incarnation uh, seems more reasonable. reasonable. It seems more yeah. reasonable, but it also seems more reasonable because it's the iteration of the story that we can that's palatable to us. Yeah, yeah. Like if we were in the 1600s, the other version would be more palatable. Yeah, I love the old version. D- just like a big, like zero to six legs. So there's just uh, like a bunch of different like varietals of them but like a cat-headed dragon seems one like a nightmare creature but also like a great like D character like not character but like a monster um i'm pretty sure the tats worm is a dnd monster one second let me pull up D&D is it? beyond okay but uh is it, yeah. it might be homebrew what it uh no i think it's actually in the monster manual really yeah uh my google search Tat-tool. came up with nothing Oh, there we go. I found homebrew. Oh, Tetzelworm, 5e D&D creature. Uh, I think it's homebrew, because this is a child sketch. Yeah, it's in, uh, it's in Pathfinder. Oh, it's in Beyond, though. It is. Is is it? Okay. Ho- is... It's, uh, it's homebrew in, in D&D Beyond, but it's in oh, there. okay. Yeah. There's also... Uh, Tetzelworm definitely makes an appearance in the uh, Pathfinder monster manuals as well. Okay, dope. Because I definitely remember seeing that when I was coming up with some ideas. Yeah. Giant Badger. I'm scrolling through the the names of monsters. Because I'm a monster, and I bought the Legendary Pack on... Did you? On being... Oh, man. You should have, because you're in my campaign... Access to it? Access to everything. Damn. Damn. Because I also bought the subscription that lets me... Uh, basically be a DM on the, the service. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Damn. Damn. I just looked at all the sources. Yeah. You shouldn't have to buy them. You should just be able to read the books. Yeah. Which this, this of course, uh, it means nothing to any of our listeners. So let's, uh, let's get to the show notes. Okay. Egg Inc. has a source book coming out? That's going to be dope. Yeah, it does. I'm actually kind of excited for it. I'm going to probably yeah. pick it. I'll, I'm definitely gonna pick it up on D and D Beyond, which there's a funny story to that. I uh, I was tired one night and I was looking at Amazon and I bought three D and D books. Yeah. Um, and then I found out that D and D Beyond existed. Oh no! So I'm returning three D and D books. Okay. Next time I have the chance to go to a UPS store. Oh. Because I like uh, I like the physical like Beyond is will be my primary resource, but one like. As a person creating a character, I like to have just, like, <laughs> sit in the middle of my living room with five books fanned out around me and just flipping through pages. That's fair. I just don't need... I didn't need the three books because yeah. they were adventure books. The, uh... I will say that the cre- character creator... We should probably end right after this. <laughs> the character oh, we creator definitely, and we Beyond ended. is so good. Like, I, I wrote everything. I had, a phys- like, a physical paper sheet done, and then I mm-hmm. went into Beyond, and I was like, this is so much faster yeah because really like is. you don't have to like flip through to find the options for all it just goes i click the you know this is my background and well, then it goes okay choose one of these three things and you're like what that's great well remember remember when we were doing call cthulhu originally yeah. how i was so fed up with the character creation process for that i actually wrote a character creator for call of cthulhu yeah anywho uh <laughs> i'm tired 
So as always, uh, if you want to find out more about Cricketpedia, you can go to cricketpediacast.com. It's, there's a link in the episode description, and all the stuff we're about to say is on that website. Um, our Instagram is at cricketpediacast. Our Twitter is the same. Um, if you want to email us, cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com. We have a Patreon. There's three tiers. Uh, hopefully by the time this episode's out, I'll have released the um, SCP episode, but I've been dragging my feet on editing it because there's a lot of production that goes into those. Like a second one? Yeah. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't recorded. It's just the production takes a while because there's a lot more effects and fitness. I, yeah. do fo- I do Foley work sometimes for them and all that stuff. But... <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Talk about Foley work. I I haven't put more time. I had time- a chance to put more time into it, but I, I thought it'd be funny to make a song about cats. <laughs> so like, it. there's a day where it's just like following my cats around with a microphone, trying to get samples, <laughs> and then I ended up auto tuning my cat. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure your cats love being followed around to get auto tuned. Well, there's I know how to make them meow. Like in my bathroom, if you run the shower, then turn it off. Mulder runs into the bathroom and starts meowing for some reason. So I just did that, and that's where most of those came from. I have a terrible shower story, but I don't want to talk about it this episode. Oh, okay. long long story short, my tub is cracked right now. I have to fix. Oh. It. Yeah, I gotta go. I gotta go to Lowe's after this and pick up some Bondo. <laughs> That's worse than I, what I thought it was gonna be. I thought you, like you you accidentally trusted a fart in the shower. Well, I didn't do that, but oh yeah, man, I gotta I gotta replace. I gotta I gotta seal some stuff and put Shoot, some fiber man. down. And yeah, it's not that bad, but it's it's bad enough that I want to get it fixed. Yeah, but it's not so bad that I want to hire a plumber and pay three hundred dollars. Yeah. So no, um, it'll be fine. Just sand good. Yeah, I mean, if you put bondo over something, as long as it's not a structural flaw, you're never gonna. It's never gonna leak. Yeah. I mean, it also probably even if it was a structural flaw, it probably wouldn't do anything either because it's fucking bondo. But yeah. regardless, um, our Patreon also has uh, a jackalope level tier, and in that tier, you get mentioned periodically. Uh, so thanks, Clay, and thanks, Marty. Yeah, uh, you know who you are. Thanks, we mentioned you a bunch. <laughs> You're the worst at thanking people. <laughs> well, they know what they're getting into. There's, yeah, I mean, if any, if if I was good at thanking them, Brandon. Yeah. I feel like I'd be doing them a disservice. It's, yeah, yeah, like they heard the they heard the first hour and twenty minutes. They know what they were getting into. They know what they know what's happening. They've they've been they've listened to fuck, how many of these is this? This one's Four, gonna 39? be thirty nine. Yeah, thirty nine of these. They know what this is about. They know what I am. <laughs> other 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 people who are listening to it might not, but Clay and Marty know. They've been yeah. they've been with us long <laughs> enough. Uh, we have a Facebook group, although I personally have been dissing like not doing as much in it for reasons that I don't want to get into on this podcast. Yeah, when I remember, I just post random stuff in yeah. there that's somewhat related to episodes and stuff like that. Um, yeah. We also have a Discord that I don't know how we can. We gotta we'll figure think, out how to do we'll, something. We're, we gotta figure out something with that. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta do some research on how to make that better. But we, we do have a Discord. Um, if you're a, a Patreon supporter, you get special channels and all that stuff, and titles, yeah. and eventually I'll, I'll put little, little like, like I just opened a Twitch app. Why did I open a Twitch app? <laughs> Why? Well, uh, you should probably. Tone tone the energy down a little bit. You're gonna start freaking people out. <laughs> mm, yeah. I got that weird energy going on right now. It's yeah. I, I'm in I'm in cool jazz mode right now. Oh, are you in cool uh, cool jazz mode? Yeah. Uh, if you enjoyed the podcast, rate, review, and subscribe. If you have any monster requests or stories, be sure to include them. We're still in the middle of a multi uh, a, a two parter on. Uh, 
the Bridgewater Triangle, which was a listener submitted thing. Um, you'll notice I say two parter. We'll we'll get into that. Uh, <laughs> if you two listen part- to last, if you listen to last yeah. week's episode, you understand. Yeah, yeah, two parter as far as they know. Until yeah. next week. Yeah. For um, our first of the seven part series. Yeah. <laughs> well, what should we call it? Um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is a five part trilogy. Okay. Well, Star Wars is a what? What are we now? Ten part trilogy. Uh, I, I wouldn't count Rogue One and Solo in the the mix for like, because they're spin offs. They're not a part of the main movie line. Yeah, they're not spin offs. They're Star Wars stories. <laughs> yes, they're story. <laughs> That's spin off though. Yeah. No, no Disney's we're, we're, weird. We're currently hitting. We, we have eight Star Wars movies. Yeah, I mean, I like Star Wars movies, but I hate Disney. <laughs> that's that's fair. I mean, also, Star Wars is the reason it took so long for King of the Monsters to come out. So, is it? As much as I like Star Wars, I kind of resent it a little bit for that fact. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at cryptobrandon. If you want to uh, watch my descent into madness, or rather my descent deeper into madness in real time, uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Mute2057 and on Twitter at JF Dunham. I have a website, johndunhamgames.com. It's hosted on the Cryptopedia site because I don't feel like paying for uh, a more expensive service that lets me do subdomains. Um, and if you want to email me, it's john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. Man, I don't know what it is about the plugs, but they always make me so tired. <laughs> uh, anywho, uh, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get sleepy weird. Gross. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. I can make it grosser. Don't oh, worry. Oh, please don't. Making things gross is kind of my uh my MO. But not like in an not in a gross gross, but just a gross gross. Yeah. Like uh yeah. <laughs> We're gonna just leave it there. Yeah. <laughs>